Hello and welcome to Johnny Does It All. Today we got something special for you. We travel to Rhode Island. We're gonna come visit some family. We're gonna get into some shenanigans, y'all. Let's go do some fishing today. Let's talk about cars. Let's do a bunch of crazy stuff with the family. It's an awesome time to come back home and visit your loved ones. I'm happy to be here. Let's get into it. Hi. <laughs> this is my nephew. That's my brother. <laughs> They're uh they were working on cars together. Go ahead and drive it out, Isaiah. Where am I on that side? You're far. Watch your mirror on your rear corner. There you go. Left. All right, hold on. Get the blinker on. Yeah, go ahead. Go down the street. I'm going to let this guy go by. Let him go first. So, we're actually in Seekonk, Massachusetts at the moment. That's where my brother lives. And um, I just wanted to share a bunch of stuff with you guys. So today's kind of like a vlogging type video. And uh, yeah, this is what they do, man. They just like restore cars. I remember growing up, my brother were always working on vehicles together. So it was always kind of a cool thing to do. Let's, uh, let's show you around a little bit and see what he's got for cars today, or this week, I should say. So Robert, do you want to explain what vehicle this is and what's work, what work's been done to it? This is a 97 Z3 that came with no exhaust on it. Yeah. Uh, so far for work, we had three of the four tires were flat. That still leaks around the rim seals. Okay. So I did that right away. Um, had a dent in the front of the hood and the kidney grills were missing, or one of the kidney grills was broken, so I replaced the kidney grills. And then yesterday I finished replacing the entire exhaust system and noticed that it has a missing O2 sensor and O2 sensor harness. Okay. So that needs to be replaced. But I also... Um, and you capped off the O2 sensor for now. So I you capped off the O2 one. sensor for now, and I'm hoping to get a new harness today. But now I noticed the car is burning a little oil. Okay. So it might be uh, that I filled it with sea foam. So sea foam was supposed to clean out the engine and the fuel system. Got you. So I'm hoping that's what it is. Yeah. And uh, we'll go from there. Awesome. But this car will be for sale. Do you want to go look at some other cars you have? They're all covered up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We can take a look at some anyway. All right. All right. All right, Rob, what car do we have here? All right, so this is a unicorn. Yeah. This is a 1990 yeah. Nissan 300ZX or the Nissan Z32, as they call them in Europe. Um, this is a twin turbo. Twin turbo coupe. This car is only a two-seater. As we'll see in a little while, I have another Z32 300ZX in the garage, but that one's a 2 plus 2 NA. What that means is basically the 2 plus 2 NA that I have inside is a non-turbo. Yeah. This one here, is that Nissan 300Z twin turbo? This is it's here. Okay. Open it. Cool, cool. Let's talk about the motor. Yeah, so this is a 3.0 V6 twin turbo. Yeah. You could tell, you'll notice the comparison on the other Z32 I have in the garage. But this one here, when you when you automatically know what twin turbos, when you see the the four hoses up front. So you got the air intakes and then the air, uh, the intercooler intakes. Mm -hmm. So it's got dual throttle bodies, as yeah. you can see. But then it has also the dual inlets for the uh, air. Gotcha. Coming off the turbos, going into the intercooler down here. And then obviously it says twin turbo on the intake manifold. Yeah. Very nice. And you have two of these. You have another one on the inside, right? I have one inside that's a non-turbo. It's a non-turbo one. That's Same engine, one. just non-turbo. Got it, got so it. So this car is a 90. It has 71,000 original miles. Wow. And this is an automatic car. Awesome. These standards are actually worth a lot more than the automatics. Really but this cool. one is a automatic. And uh, this car here, what I got left to do on this car, this car runs and drives, mm -hmm. but I'm upgrading the, the injectors and the coil packs. And I'm going to have the car retune. I'm going to delete the EGR system, which is all these pipings back here. Okay. I'm going to delete the EGR system and um, replace the coil packs with the hair. And the injectors are underneath the fuel rail rides like this. So I have to remove the entire intake manifold to do that. All right, guys. We're going to fire this thing up. Let's check out. Isn't that key so cool? Rob's over here. Fire up, dude. Belts are a little wet. 
car's been sitting for months. Yeah. personally know I had one just like this. This is a motorhome camper, Toyota. And uh, this belongs to my father. Let's go see what he's uh, what he's up to. Let's go, let's go inside really quick. Oh uh, you know by the way you gotta have the gotta have the Portugal on there. Absolutely what's up dad? Hey how I'm you watching, doing? I'm watching the soccer game. You're watching the soccer game? Yeah. Who's playing? Uh, Port and Sporting. Both Portuguese teams, right? Yeah, they're both Portuguese teams. Nice. They're doing a replay right now. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, this is my dad's camper, guys. And like I was telling you guys earlier, I had one just like this. He's just chilling in here right now. This is like a sleeping area where you can sleep up top. These turn into beds and stuff down in here too. And this also will like lay down and turn into a bed. So it's really, really cool. And if you don't want to come into the front, you can kind of hop into the cockpit right from here. So, pretty cool, right? Let's take a look around the back. It's got a little kitchen, kitchenette in the back. Let's take a look in here. Got the commode, which doubles up as a shower system as well with a kitchen sink, oh, sorry, a bathroom sink, and a shower head. He's got himself a little refrigerator, and these bunks are really, really cool because you can kind of just sit here and watch TV, you can cook some stuff on a stove top if you want to, throw some stuff in the microwave, and this is the life right here, just chilling, hanging out. Watching the game. <laughs> Plenty of storage. My brother also owns, at the moment, he's had more, but he's he also owns two Mini Coopers. He's a, an addict for Mini Coopers. Kind of funny because at one point he was a muscle car guy. Still is very much so. He loves his Fords and his Chevys, but he also has some Mini Coopers. This is one of them. Let's go take a look at another one here. This is his daily driver right here. This is the sport version of the Mini Cooper, and this is his daily driver. This is what he drives back and forth to work with. Um, I really like this one. These, these things are really fun to drive, and it's kind of funny. Like I was saying, you know, he's a Mini Cooper guy now, but he was, at one point, the only thing he would, would drive was Fords, but he's also had Chevys and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Chevelle we've worked on in the past. But these, these cars are really nice. They're fun to drive, very sporty to get around in. So, here at Robert's house, there's always some kind of restoration project going on, some kind of repair. I know these cars don't look the greatest right now, but I promise you, these cars always turn around and look great when they're done. Um, he'll pick up stuff that are, is just like completely demolished and just flip it around and make it a beautiful car. So, Robert, let's uh, let's talk about these cars. What do we got here? The so what we're looking at right now is a 91 Nissan Skyline R32. Mm -hmm. This car was a... Uh, from what I gather in the history, it was a drift car down in South Carolina after it got imported from Japan. Yeah. Uh, it was smashed up real bad. We had to drag this thing off uh, my trailer, not my trailer, but the trailer that I got transported up from. I used my Jeep in four wheel drive with a, with a winch just to get it off the trailer. And then once we got off the trailer, we dragged it into the garage. And um, fast forward to the end of that night, we actually uh, had no keys to the car. A friend of mine, was the last one came over and made a key for it. 
and it fired right up. I couldn't believe that the car actually ran because we had no idea because it was so twisted. But um, fast forward now about uh, six months we've had this car and we've got it now so that all four corners of the suspension were basically destroyed in one way or another. Now the car actually runs, drives, and it's still a continuous project. Uh, what you see in here still is that I still got to replace both front and rear windows on it, and then uh, the front left side, which is actually the front left passenger side, right? Because this is a right hand drive car, <laughs> five speed manual. And uh, the only thing left as far as suspension is I just got to fix this frame support here yep. on the left front side, pull it out about four inches, <laughs> and then forward about two inches, and then I'll be able to structure it together and fit it, put this car together and get it on the road again. It does run and drive great now. Runs, drives, steers, stops, all the lights work and everything. I got brand new headlights for it in the garage, uh, in the car. And these cars are at one point were illegal in America, right? Because they're yes. only Japanese. So this car is over 25 years old. This is a 91. Yeah. It is now legal to own a right-hand drive car. And for anybody that uh, knows what a Skyline is, these are basically the Lamborghinis or Ferraris of Japan. Right. Doesn't look like much sitting here. It looks like a Nissan Stanza or something. Right. But <laughs> It's actually a uh, Nissan supercar. The GTR or the Skyline is the supercar of Japan. Awesome. Okay. What do we got here to the left at the bottom? So to the left is my other Z32. This is a 94 Z32 or 300ZX 2 plus 2. 2 plus 2 meaning it has a, uh, it's a hatchback with the two folding rear seats. This is a non-turbo. It is a five speed. I bought this car and it was smashed on the right side. Yeah. And uh, the whole front bumper, the right headlight, and the left fender, lower control arm, the strut, everything was destroyed on that side. This car had gotten hit hard on the, or hit something hard on the front right, spun around and whacked this rear quarter, and it broke the rear bumper. I have already pulled the rear bumper, fixed the entire suspension on this car, and as you can see, there's new, uh, not new, but uh, a newer bumper on it. I got a new headlight on it, new fender on it. I pulled the rear quarter. We got a new bumper for it in the back. Awesome. But this is a non-turbo uh, V6 3.0, and it is a five-speed car. Can we take a little sneak peek at what's above it on the lift? Above it is my pride and joy. <laughs> <laughs> above here is a uh, Grand National. We, we won't give them the full view just yet. We'll just this give is a little... 87 Grand National. Yeah. We'll take a peek under here. Yeah. Let's see. So we won't see this just yet. We're gonna have to come back to it Let's at some point. see the exhaust point. cutouts on the passenger door if you want. Yeah. I bought this car. This car is actually a retired race car. Yeah. This car was doing a lot of quarter mile stuff and I wanted something like this that I can have power if I want it or just cruise around. Not gonna race this car ever again. Yeah. Just have fun with it in the streets and uh, it's too expensive to break. <laughs> but How many miles on this one? This car has a hundred and I want to say 105,000 miles on okay, it. Okay, not an bad. 87. Yeah. But this car is actually, uh, when we look at it again, the original uh, Grand National engine in it was actually pulled and bored over. It is now a 4.1 instead of a 3.8. Uh, this car puts out about 550 horsepower. Nice. It's, it's a lot. It has so much aftermarket stuff done to it. And um, it's my pride and joy. Do you want to talk about uh, what you did to a Buick Regal when you were a kid? <laughs> my first car that my parents gave me was an 83 Buick Regal with a 3.8 V6 in it. I ripped that 3.8 out and put a 5.7 350 Chevy in it <laughs> with a 350 Turbo. You were trying to make it into this car, right? Yeah, I made it into a clone by painting it black and everything like that. But I actually had a, another 87 Grand National back around 2007. Yeah. I bought my first Grand National back then, actually online. I had an 84 WH1 Okay. that I bought off, off of, uh, back then it was the Yankee Swapper. Yep. I paid 700 bucks for it. Uh, I kept that car for a little while and ended up flipping it. And with the money, I bought an 87 Grand National that was sweet. And uh, because of my divorce, I was forced to sell it. So this, this right here, this, this 87 Grand National you see up here, what's funny is that I kept a set of original keys to my last 87 Grand National. And when I brought this car home, the buyer actually delivered it to me. And he was just in Pawtucket and then town line over. And I was telling the story about how I had one so similar to this, so similar to the things done to it, where it was bored over to be a 4.1, and I had the cutout exhaust, and a front mount intercooler, um, four links adjustable suspension. I had so much stuff, he's like, dude, this is your car. This is your car. I was like, 
It might be. I have the VIN number somewhere at home. I'll find out. But I had a set of keys to this, my old one in my toolbox over there. When he drove the car, I grabbed the keys. I walked out with uh, the keys that I had, put in the ignition, and then fired the car up. <laughs> the same keys. I told you it was your car. I told you it was your car. And I go, let's look at the VIN number. And long story short, it was not my car. But right. funny that the same cut key worked worked for this car. <laughs> That's so, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So but it was meant to be. This car was a gift to myself after I sold my first home in East Providence. I used uh, the majority of the money to buy this car, which was a gift to myself. What do you say we go for a trip to Newport, Rhode Island? Let's do it. All right. Down here is just like a bunch of shops that you can walk in and out of. 
little pizza shops and souvenir shops and things like that. Like I said before, this place has a lot of history, so there's always something to do here in Newport, Rhode Island. I don't care what walk of life you're from. You can make a great day out of it. You can spend a whole day here for sure. All right, guys, here we are at Fort Adams. We're gonna be doing a little bit of fishing. Let's head over to the dock right now. I'm here with my family. Let's see what we can actually catch. Here we are. I'm gonna show you some bait here that we're using. We got some clam bellies that'll pick up on some stripers. And um, we have some sea worms that'll probably pick up some scup. These guys, as a kid, always you know, haunted me because they have teeth. They'll actually like, they have these like two little pincers that like shoot out of their mouth. something really really small by the feel of it. Maybe I don't know what it is. Let's see. Little to talk. No, it's most covered. No, to Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of this. It this is this is the talk. Small to talk, huh? See that? <laughs> nah I'm okay. See if I can get it on the camera, see what it looks like. Little guy. Get the hook out of his mouth. <laughs> oh, I just dropped him. <laughs> I'll pick him back up. Where is he? He skipped right out of my hand, dude. Well, they uh, they slippery. The tags are slippery. Uh. Oh, you guys can see him, but he's kind of tiny. Very tiny little fish. We'll toss them back in the water. <laughs> I think I'm just catching rocks. There we go. What do we got? What do we got? A little baby sun. Go. Another little uh, tatag. Yeah. Basically, is that a tatag or a black sea bass? Maybe a little baby bass. Yeah, it is a That's black sea bass. That's a black sea bass. Sea bass. Yeah, that's a little baby black sea bass. Is the camera focusing? Yeah, I got it right in your hand. 
All right, guys. So this is my nephew Nathaniel. Is my you've met already my nephew Isaiah. But we're out here in Four Adams, and we're doing some fishing still. They finally came out of their cavern in there. They were watching YouTube videos, right? What were you guys watching? <laughs> What, you were watching what, Mr. Beast? Mr. Beast. Yeah. Um, what was he? What was he streaming about? He was streaming a, a trivia tournament with a bunch of content creators, and Nate and I think that the Demilios were cheating. Uh, I see. I, I heard you guys going cheating. <laughs> <laughs> totally were. They were. Yeah. For three hundred thousand dollars, too, they cheated. Is it cold out here? No, it's not bad actually. <laughs> this is the temperature yeah, we get in Seacon. Yeah. yeah. I'm freezing. Maybe I'm just not used to Rhode Island weather anymore. It's cold just don't fall in. It'll be much colder once you come back out. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like regular black cement that you walk out on. It. Yeah. Cool. Someone's shooting fireworks off in the background. I can hear it. Right. Just what is it, October nineteenth? Fireworks. <laughs> Dude, for the whole month of July, it was just fireworks every night. I know. We had them over in Atlanta too. So bad. For like weeks. Hey, you look like a professional skier. Professional skier? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's all bundled up. <laughs> Cold. Just a little bit. All right, Rob, what do we got here? What's the next thing we're doing? So this is a Brute magnet. Yeah. It's a free uh, commercial for Brute. But anyway, this is a 1,200-pound strength magnet. The magnet itself probably weighs about maybe five, six pounds. So what you do is you take the line out. Uh, there we go. That'll work. All right, so the magnet. Ugh. I should have greased it before I came. Okay, that's it. That's how it hooks on? That's it, just like that. Awesome. And then you tie this off to your stomach or to a cleat so you don't lose the whole thing. Yep. Now, since there's so much line, what I'll do, I'll just drop it in. Not with all the line out there. Alright. Just drop it straight down because, let's say a boat was tied up here and they go, oh shit, we dropped something off the side. Yeah. It'd be right here. That's pretty deep. So there it is. Nice. So now we're in. Yeah. You just kind of walk around with it. Watch the line behind me. Yeah. Nothing yet. Piece of metal, tiny little piece of metal. This is a different kind of fishing. <laughs> Magnet fishing. <Magnet> fishing. <laughs> what are you going to pick up with that? Guns, tools, <laughs> murder weapons. Cell phones, knives, murder weapons. <laughs> murder metal is what it's Isaiah, called. Yeah. Isaiah wants to charge his phone, okay? Oh, he wants to charge the start the camper? Yeah. You, you got the key, right? Couple. He's got a friend. All right, pull up. I'm gonna walk up this pier with a magnet. Okay. I said, uh, John, the first time I went fishing with the kids with the magnet. Yeah. Uh, we went to the bo a boat ramp. And we pulled out a bicycle, a beach chair, a wrench, a bunch of nuts and bolts. <laughs> it's cool. It's gotta be awesome. Do we get like the handle of a knife or something? I think so. Yeah. I remember we got like a, a pocket that was just completely roasted and shut. Oh yeah, we did. Seashells? Dude, how long do you think that net was down there? That's just a line. A line. Oh. Mussels, crabs. This is what birds beat. Yeah, they bring them, they drop them on the dock to crack them open. Exactly. Uh, a lot. They like fly up in the air. And then drop them from high up in the air so that it cracks open the shell. Mm -hmm. Alright, guys. Smart. Mm -hmm. Let's pack it up. You can do that. It seems that my brother has gotten stuck on the metal bench. I'll pull backwards and go right in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> the magnet stuck on the bed. Oh, dad, oh, you're going in. <laughs> you're going in if you do that. God damn. Yeah, yeah, that's the best angle for it. That's the small spot on it. Wait. Here you go, you got it. Oh, you're going to slide it. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> All right, guys. Wrap up of the night. We're done. It's really, really cold out here. I am ready to go home and get warm. So... Thank you guys for watching this video. It was an absolute pleasure to uh, invite you guys to Rhode Island. This is where I was born and raised. This is where my family's at. Absolutely love it here. Um, so yeah, just keep watching along. Thank you for everybody who subscribed so far. If you haven't done yet, please subscribe to my channel and I'll make sure to set your notifications to all. I can barely talk because it is cold. But anyway, we'll see you in the next one. I'm now having any penis. <laughs> Dude, I don't know if I held it still enough. I saw that. Yeah.